I need a motion to call the town board meeting Thursday, October 24th, 2011, 2013. To order, please. Make the motion. The second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a moment of silence for the military serving in this country and out of this country. Thank you. Emergency exits are on your left, our right. Roll call, please. Councilwoman Meemer? Here. Councilwoman Perotti? Here. Councilwoman Hetzelberger? Here. Supervisor Flood? Here. Any public comment? Town clerk's report. I'm all set. No, I have no idea. Cheryl. Um, Cheryl Morse, Town of Amenia, resident. Um, I'm here this evening because I got some information in the mail on a foil that. Um, I had presented back on September 24th, and um, I really kind of don't understand what's going on here. I'd like to know, who is it that has um, the um, escrow accounts for any matters that go before planning and zoning or the building department? Um, which department receives and handles those escrow accounts? Uh, I think it's the planning board, right? Is it the, is it the planning board, planning department? I think so. Well, you know, they're all tied in together. They all communicate. So. Okay. Well, I asked for, um, in my FOIL, I submitted three FOILs um, asking for particular information on um, all of the escrow accounts um, from earlier this year. From let's see, uh, let's see, February, March, April, and May, um, all the escrow accounts um, I was looking for information on, and I have uh, a response here that the bookkeeper sent to um, the town clerk, stating that for those records that I asked for, there are no records in the possession of the town which satisfy the records sought in my FOIL request. Now, if, if people pay money into an escrow account and there are uh, bills presented uh, for professional services that are provided for those accounts that are subject to review before the planning board or some other entity here in the town, why is it that the town is not in possession of any of the information about those escrow accounts. I asked for very specific things. And I find this very, very troubling because the first three times I asked for these things, I was told that they didn't exist. Well, no, I was denied. Now I'm told, after asking for them in another fashion, that um, there are no records in possession of the town. So that tells me there's a serious problem here with finances and accounting. And I don't understand either somebody doesn't want me to look at these records or somebody destroyed them. Because there were four escrow accounts, there were four people, four entities that went before the planning board for review. And yet none of those documents exist I'm wondering why, and I think I'm gonna have to take this to a higher authority, and I hate to have to do that, but being told that I didn't ask for them in the right way or from the right department or any of that is inexcusable. This is pretty explicit. Everybody knew what I wanted, but yet I can't get those documents through FOIL. So I don't know what's going on, but it really needs to be looked into. Cheryl, you didn't state your address. 
why do I have to state my address every time? Everybody Nobody else does. does every time. I live in the town of Amenia, P.O. Box 645, 4909, Route 22. Oh, okay. And if you don't quit asking me, that's harassment, isn't it, darling? What's your address? 604 Smithfield Valley Road. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Clerk? I have nothing. These uh, issues that you have to discuss later, I want, want to know, uh, would like to know, uh, if you're changing the tax structure and of the town, then are we not entitled to know what the, the changes are? Uh, I, we're, uh, we're not changing the tax structure. All right. Do you remember a, a lawsuit a few years ago concerning uh, Amania Sand and Gravel and Cumberland Farms? No, I don't know the particulars. You don't remember? It never happened. Oh, I don't know. It could have happened. I don't know, but I don't know the particulars. Well, nobody what, else seems to know either, and yet it was settled. Now well, you're you're coming up with another one with Silo Ridge where they want to change their assessed value. And when you do that, it casts upon the rest of the town to pick up <coughs> what the difference is. So any settlement, I think that the, the taxpayer should be entitled to know. Well, I believe there was a lawsuit Involved. Yes, sir. Yeah, they there won, was. They won, won the lawsuit. They haven't won it yet, have they? Yeah. This, this is the settlement. What is the settlement? Um, <coughs> we're going to get into it later, a little bit later. Well, yeah. I, that's all right. Save it till you're discussing it. But I just want to be sure that we. There were two. Yes. Um, one drops it from. 294, 294,000 to 238,500, which is a $55,000 change. The second one. There's another one. Island Hills or something. There's a couple, uh, another one for 180, went down to 100, that's an $80,000 change. The biggest one is that the golf course was assessed at 9,200,000. The settlement assessment is 5, 000, 5 million. The change is 4,200,000. Okay, I just want to know what that's definitely going to change. Well, I think what we did, what they did here is they settled, they agreed to a, the town agreed to a, Period. well, it's a $12,000 change for the town, which I talked to Ron about it a couple weeks ago, and he feels he can make that up. Uh, where are you going to feel the differences in school taxes? Because I think they took a, like a $190,000 hit in the school taxes. Okay. That's that's just what so I, I don't hold me to that figure. It's I, I know it's up there. That's, I just want to know how. It, I know we never found out. What but I, I don't know about the other two. I don't know about them. Okay. Ellen O'Connell, <coughs> Amenia. Um, Linda Gregory has found a lady who is a certified personal trainer with the Heart, American Heart Association, and uh, we're trying to get a uh, 
a exercise class for seniors. She does a six weeks program. She, and in the beginning, she assesses each person individually, and they set. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Her name is Gail Fidel. She's from Wappinger Falls. She works for a company that is called King of Fitness. She's a certified trainer. She wants to start an exercise program for the seniors. It would be a six weeks course, um, Tuesday and Thursday. That's not set in stone. We're waiting for people. We want to put it on 22 and see what uh, response we get for sign up. It could be evenings or days whichever the most people want. Um, they do an assessment for each person that signs up, and then they set their goals of what they want to achieve by the end of the six weeks. So it's a very uh, oriented program, goal-oriented, and I just wanted to let the town board know about it. We will be putting more information on 22, but um, you can call me at 373 9693 or Linda Gregory at 373 9037 and we'd be happy to give you more information on it but it will be on channel 22 within the next week thank you I just have a question is she looking to have something here or where is oh, yes where the, I'm sorry in the gym yeah in the gym okay. right and we're looking for the dates that are open but we don't know if people would rather have it in the evening or in the daytime so whatever okay, is but the, definitely here. Right, okay. right. She's, uh, she's very, um, very energetic, and she has a lot of experience, so we're looking forward to getting that started. When I was at Tally Hall, some seniors were asking for such a program. So right, right. That's good. And there are, there's a group that um, they, were in, they were in Sharon, and then now th some of them are in, um, in the Presbyterian Church, in South Armenia, but this is a really goal orientated and it's uh, geared for the seniors. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Posted. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, <clears throat> Halloween is curfew. What time do we normally do that? Eleven. Ten. <laughs> Eight. 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 Eight o'clock. <laughs> Unless you're staying with Zach and Carly this year, you can make whatever time you want. Is that a, um, I guess I need a motion from the board to, uh, I'll make a motion that we uh, set the time at 8 o'clock for the Halloween curfew. Second. Councilman Reamer? Yes. Councilman Brody? Yes. Councilman Hensselberger? Yes. And Supervisor Flagg? Yeah. Uh, proposed zoning law amendments. Uh, this has been floating around for a while. Um, I think last meeting we talked about having setting up a meeting with the planning board to sit down and, and go over what they want to do. I've gotten a couple calls from some planning board members today. Um, they, wanted, they would like to meet with us if we could. So I, I had sent around uh, Nina circulated yep. um, what the proposed changes were, um, but they're fairly extensive and right. something that should be discussed. Um, one thing to consider is your master plan and making sure that the proposed changes are consistent with that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know whether any board considers that or not. But and then also the SPO has got to be modified a little bit to accept the pullbacks um, change in that gravel mine. At some point it should be, because it doesn't, yeah, no, they need with the, the gravel mine overlay. Right. But right. we made a change, but it won't be reflected on the map. So that has to be, that has to be done. You made a change for? Um, Correct. Uh, uh, Rich, is that? Rich press. Right. right. Um, that, I mean, I was given a, an amended map. It just had um, the Ridgecrest Farm property on it. At some point, that's got to be right, incorporated I, into your correct into your uh, you know the map that's in the right. It's economical to do them all at one time. Okay. I would think. Yeah, the county did it for us a lot. 
Well, can you just make map changes and add property Will to you, uh, existing well, consist overlay? Consistent to the master plan, as you're saying. But this, you're talking about the change that was already made to Ridgecrest. So you've made that by right, but then th that's got to be reflected it has to correct in it's our, in our uh, comprehensive in plan, the, right? The code that's true for any all of the right. the local laws that you've mm -hmm. adopted in the you know the past couple of years. So I'm not sure when the last time the code was updated. It it hasn't been. We made a change to the scenic protection overlay yeah. uh, back in August of 2012. Like it was a while back that never got recorded, yeah. you know, it had a public hearing and all that, but it never got recorded, cha changed on the map that right. we have up in the planning board room. But that, that's true so for a lot of your, the local laws that you've adopted over the past couple of years, they haven't been incorporated it's into the code, which they should be. Um, and so that, the change to the map should happen as well. Uh -huh. uh, if it is more economical, you should do it all at one time. I don't so know what whether. would be the process? Well, you have to talk to general, it would be a matter of providing general code with the, uh, right, they do the updated codification yep. for you. So we have the local laws. Um, Mike Hayes was the attorney for the town when he did the, uh, to the, the change to the SMO. Um, but I mean that, you know, it was Joel Russell was the attorney law. for Joel Russell was the attorney for the uh, comp plan. Yes, um, it's just when people buy that booklet, it should be in there, rather. Than so you have to make the maps in the in the text correct, correct. Yeah. That's what we have to do. Yeah, that's and it goes to Albany and it's corrected in our for our zone. For well, Albany. they're already the local laws are filed in <laughs> Albany. It's okay. a matter of updating the right. code. So that's what we have to talk about the planning board with. What they're requiring, what they're requesting, and then there's just some other stuff that I saw. Nina's email today. I was looking at her emails. And yeah, exactly. How you update the map? I'm not sure. I'm not sure who did the the county the planning county department. Did those. Okay. Uh, then I suppose you should talk to have somebody talk to the county. That would be where to start as far as updating the, the map. Um, should that be the planning board or? or one of us from the uh, it, it should be the, I would think the town board. Okay. It's, it's your, yeah. you know, you're the keepers of the code, and that's technically, even though it's a map, it's part of your zoning law. Yeah. Um, I, I could do that unless somebody else wants to do it, find out how we go about it. That'd be great. Yeah, there must be a process yeah. that we have to follow. Well, we haven't, it we haven't looks like the overlay maps yet. were, because um, I spoke to Roy, Budnick about this. He yeah. apparently provided, you know, you used a map that he provided. It's, it says that's what the source is. Right. Um, so I don't know if you have to have him update the overlay map to include the whole map um, for the Ridgecrest Farm parcel. Yeah, I think it needs to be on there. And I yeah. think. Yeah, um, but I would start with the county. If the county yeah. produced the map itself, Yes, because I, I picked up those maps and we had some mounted. Okay. So, yeah. so I'll, I'm I'll assuming go. what happened is the county may have taken <coughs> Roy Budnick's map and incorporated it into it. But I would start with them and yeah. then okay. tell you to do I'll, that. I'll take that on. So we need to set up a meeting time with the planning board? Yeah, I'll reach out to uh, Nina. And we'll get some dates. Okay, snow removal bits. We received one bit. Well, that's easy. Uh, winter maintenance work proposal, northeast. Uh, Lawn <coughs> Landscape land Maintenance LLC will provide the town of Mini with the following work. It's outlined and supported and described in the attached winter maintenance contract specifications. Uh, pro 
proposed work provide, provide all the contract is offered on a fixed cost basis for the period beginning November 1st and expiring April 1st services beyond that date are offered at an hourly rate in addition to the fixed cost uh, provide all snow shoveling to the location specified as required minimum snow depth, depth is two inches um, Season snowfall accumulation up to 80 inches uh, is 14,896. Snowfall, season snowfall accumulations exceeding 80 inches shall be performed at an hourly rate of $65 per man and a machine cost, machine plus contract rate of 14,896. Uh, special note, the contract is offered on a fixed cost basis. No additional charges will be made for any work needed and covered under this agreement and attached specifications, nor will any nor any refund made for any work not needed during the time period specified above. Work outside the contract agreement will be completed only if requested and approved by the town board, the town of immediate writing. We propose to furnish labor, equipment, material completed in ordinance in accordance with the above specifications and subject terms and conditions found on page two, three, four, and five of this agreement. Uh, there's a payment schedule, which is normal. Insurance they'll have. So, what's the board's flavor? What was the bottom line? Fourteen thousand. Yep. And the shoveling at the Fountain Square is nine hundred and twelve dollars, up to eighty inches. Make a motion to accept the bid. Second. Councilman Reber? Yes. Councilman Brody? Yes. Councilman Hitzelberger? Yes. Councilman Supervisor Flood? Yes. Can you hand that to me? Four repair bids. Made one. <coughs> We have four rooms that we haven't sanded the floors yet upstairs. This is to repair, to take off the carpet, uh, get rid of the carpet, uh, sand the floors, scrape four passes, uh, polyurethane, labor for staining wood deck or floor, labor for staining wood deck or floor. Uh, total cost is seven thousand three ninety six eighty four. The insurance is included. Um, This actually was approved a long time ago, and the guy never, the one, the original, the original contractor never showed up. So I think he, uh, what's everybody feel? What is the to total cost? 7,396.24. And that's for three rooms? Four. Four rooms. Right? Four. One. You have four rooms. One, two, three, four. This one? That one. Oh, this one. That I wasn't one. counting this one. Yeah. I would make a motion that we uh, accept that bid for the floor sanding. Second. Council, uh, more discussion? Oh, discussion. Uh, we received an email today from the Department of Labor regarding um, work that certain um, forms that had to be completed because um, this work has to be done by prevailing wage. Okay. So all, of, all the work I has to be done. I don't think all the work has to be done for prevailing wage. Um, if it's that does. Pub if it's public yeah, it does. work, it's going to be prevailing wage. And someone from the Department of Labor sent us Oh, I saw that, yep. So we'll, we'll double check with him to make sure that we'll get the form and make sure he's got the prevailing wage. He forwarded us all the information that we need. Mary has the forms and the right. emails, so we just have to fill it out. And he said he'd be happy to help us if we had any questions. Right. right. We saw them. So, so just, just, just to make sure that we're yeah. covered as far as prevailing wage, because the fines can be substantial. Uh, set a public hearing for the preliminary. Yep. Oh, finish. Councilman. 
Brody? Yes. Councilman Hitzelberger? Yes. And Supervisor Yes. Set a public uh, hearing for the preliminary budget. Update works for everybody. Monday the 30th? Monday the 30th? Wednesday. Huh? Wednesday. Oh, is it Wednesday? Yeah. You won't make a newspaper unless you do the PFC journal. What? The 24th. what day are you looking at? She was suggesting the 30th, October. That's how but then I won't. Oh no. The, but I won't make the next paper is the 31st. I see. The line is Tuesday. It's not in print. What? It's not in print. You want to do I it? Print. <laughs> November? Can you do it in November? I don't think so. Huh? I don't, I don't think, think so. I don't think you'd go that long, can you? So that would be you Halloween? Can, you've got to have it within. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a week of the election day, something like that. So, oh, so, it so needs we can to be after. It needs to be that next after election. No, I, well, there, the deadline I think is determined by election day. I think it's got to be within a week of the election. Of the election. Yeah, within, within a week after. We can do it after? I think so. It says public hearing by Thursday following election. Okay. Yeah. That's what the next town board meeting says. Sure. Just start it off. Yeah. The next town board meeting. So we could do it on the 7th. So what, what day did you say? That's not the. We don't meet. Yeah, we can start here. No, we don't meet. For, we don't meet at the town board on the 7th. On the 31st. Yeah. Um, I, I can get there, but I, I'm not going to be on time. <laughs> I have an um, all-day thing. It says, public hearing by Thursday following election may be adjourned, but not beyond 11.15. So we are meeting on the That's our next meeting, right? the 14th. The 14th. 14th. So do it on the 14th. 14th. <coughs> November 14th is the date. Okay. Still start at 7? Yeah. Did you say November 14th? 14th. Yeah. November 14th. And that's on the preliminary board. Yes. Okay. That's the public hearing for the preliminary. Uh, vacant Recreation Commission position. And Pete Clare resigned, correct? No. So we have, an open, we have to advertise? We had done that general... We had, I had sent a notice to um, Whitney back oh. when we all talked about it, and I haven't received anything. So there's other openings, so maybe we can put them all together. Put them all together. All right, get a vacant rec uh, ethics committee. Who's off there? Who's on the ethics committee? Who's up? Jean. Jean. Schweiger. Uh, planning board. Nina. Nina. Uh, Nina. Mm -hmm. I think CBA is David Menegat, and I have a letter. You have a um, letter from him, or right? him already indicating that he'd like to. I don't think Nina's going to stay. Um, yes, uh, ethics. Who on the ethics? Jeannie. Jean. Jean Thorne. Jean. Thorne. I think it's Jean. Yes, right. Schweiger. So I'll do ethics, planning board, CBA. And recreation, all in one more press release and website. Yeah, the um, vacant recreation commission position um, is, you know, is it's a replacement position that would be up on on in 2018. 
I'll check with Nina, but I don't think she's going to take it again. A Willow Lane update. I spoke to Gleason's attorney. Uh, she promised me she would get signed contract to me this week. I don't have it yet. Um, so I'll call her tomorrow. And, um, once we have that, we just have to submit it to the county with Gleason's final bill. Payment's already been approved by the board. And then the county will pay the town and the town pay Gleason. And that should be it. There's still the issue with the landscaping on uh, Mr. S and Mrs. Slater's property. Uh, Gleason got an estimate for it from uh, Millbrook Nursery for $2,900. Um, they can't put in the trees, however, until next year. They're not the specific trees that Mr. Slater requested, for whatever reason, are not going to be available until next year. So that's something that we'll have to work out. I'm going to see if Mr. and Mrs. Slater will just accept payment from uh, Gleason now, and then that would... Get their own <coughs> trees. Yeah, and uh, that would be it, or see if... Well, that would make more sense. We don't want this dragging on another year. Correct. But at least you'll be able to, you're going to be able to get the county... Um, we could always set the 2900 in an escrow, right, if you had to? Correct. We can do it that way. I mean, yeah. that's an easy piece of Easy way. Work mm -hmm. that out. Right. Okay. But he hasn't signed the contract yet? Uh, no, as far as I know, he hasn't signed it, but again, he, I was told he would sign it this week and they were going to get it to me, so. Well, no contract, no check, so. That's right. I think he'd want to sign it. Yeah. So he certainly has it, as much, if not more, incentive as the town to, to get the contract signed. Um, once I get it all, I can update everybody by email. Okay. And um, I'm sorry, the Ethics Committee, the physician who's up is Caroline McEnroe, not Jean Schwager. Oh. Next is the proposed local law amending amendment town's outdoor uh, wood boiler law. We have one on on the books, but we have to make some adjustments to it. Correct. You, you, the, the town adopted um, an outdoor wood boiler law. I'm not sure when you did it, but apparently you did it before DEC adopted their regulations or they had a major amendment to their regulations. And as a result, there are some provisions of your law that are not as strict as the DEC regulations. Um, so as a result, it's a good idea to amend your law so that it's in compliance with the DEC regulations. I sent a, a copy of the proposed amendment um, along with a resolution of introduction, but uh, what I was proposing, it's up to the, entirely up to the board, but I was proposing that you would adopt it at, um, uh, I think I put your Nove the November, November 14th, yep. 14th meeting to introduce it and then adopt it uh, on the December 12th meeting. So it'll give you close to 30 days in between. But this chapter 84 is the new chapter. Chapter 84 is the existing chapter. Existing chapter, that yeah. you're making the changes. That's a change, correct. What the local law, the proposal of the law would do is repeal the entire chapter 84 and then replace it with uh, what I provided to the board. Now we're doing an amendment to the local law. Is that correct? 
Correct. An yeah. amendment to your existing law. To your existing law. Correct. Right. Do we need to do a public hearing for an amendment? You do. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so we need to you, set that. You do the amendment just like any other local law. So well, that's what they're going. Yeah. And so you'll have to have a public hearing. So we need to set up a public hearing for that. Correct. Especially since there's significant differences between what Ian is proposing and what is currently on the books. Well, any we amendment should definitely have public. a lot of discussion about it before we go ahead and pass it. Well, it gives other people the public hearing. will give the public a chance to um, talk about it, too. We should leave a copy of the um, changes with the town clerk so people can view it. And you put it up online, Don. Mary has this, so she has the, she can do that. And Mary put it up online. Yeah, should, should be able to read it through before they come in. Mm -hmm. Right. I sent it to her. What about, how does it affect existing wood furnaces that, you know, I just happen to know is the setbacks. If they're not within that, what happens if they don't comply now? Right. Well, if they're not in compliance, there's an enforcement. Uh, procedure set forth in the law. Okay. Um, so they're subject to fines of uh, okay. $350 per violation, um, similar to 250 any other. currently, and John Fenton would enforce that. Yeah, and that's another update. I mean, the, the town law allows you to impose fines of up to $350 now. So when you adopted this, the limit was probably 250 um, mm -hmm. So okay. that allows you to update that as well. Um, there, would the the DC um, regulations distinguish between um, new and existing outdoor wood boilers, and also between commercial and residential? So your law didn't have any distinction between commercial and residential, so now it's going, you know, the proposed amendment does. Um, the way the proposed amendment reads, there are restrictions that apply to all outdoor wood boilers with respect to setbacks and the height and the emissions. Um, and then there are specific provisions that apply to new commercial outdoor wood boilers and new residential um, residential size, commercial size and residential size. You have restrictions that apply specifically to those. So there are some restrictions that apply to all of them, and I can't recall exactly the setback. It's got to be at least 200 feet from the boundary line. Yeah, this one says 100. So I don't know what we were before. So I guess... Um, We'll have to go back and compare it ourselves to what we had. You were 200, I think I was put- Was it 200? I put 200 in there that for um, agricultural oh, parcels that are more than five acres, they're only 100. I think for the residential, for whatever reason, DEC makes a distinction there. Okay. Yeah. But well, they, up, they updated their law, which is why we have to update Correct. ours. Okay. Well, I, guess I know John Fenton had an issue last year. I think there was only one that I had an issue with. It doesn't, okay. it doesn't take long before the neighbors call. Yeah. Um, there's a couple. There was there's a, only so many months they can run them anyway. They're, they're subject to the burning restriction, which is between May and October, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, well, yeah. so when the no burn period is in fact they can't you can't use outdoor wood boilers okay okay it, it's not an exception but it's a different standard so um, the setback with respect to uh, the boundaries with other properties I think is a little bit different mm -hmm. uh, for the residential size it's only 100 feet. And then the commercial size, it's actually greater, it's 300 feet. Whereas for uh, all other uses, it's uh, 200 feet. <coughs> mm -hmm. 
Do you want to set a public hearing tonight, or do you just want to? I, I would wait until you introduce the, okay. the local law. And you're going to put on the? Lisa, we can put that up now, even though this indicates November 14th date. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So you are doing a copy of the original and then to local law? So, so they can compare. Correct. I've already and then prepared, you know, the, this the is draft I sent to you this is, is the law itself. Put up the um, thing, so I sent it as a separate points. document just because it's so extensive. Yeah. So I didn't include it in the resolution of introduction. Uh, and I prepared the resolution of introduction so that's ready to go. And it just refers to mm -hmm. the amendment to the local law itself as an exhibit. So we don't need to act on anything tonight. I, I just sent it for discussion purposes. Okay. Uh, the tax uh, cases, Satoria, how do I pronounce that? Here. Um, Higher Ground Country Club versus the Town of Amenia, and Salan, Salon Commercial versus the Town of Amenia. Uh, so reading from these resolutions. Yeah, you can read the resolution. resolution 70. 70 of 2013. Resolution authorizing settlement of Silan is S I L A N commercial LLC tax satoria proceedings. At, a, at the meeting of the town board of the town of Amenia, held at the Amenia Town Hall on the 24th day of October 2013 at 7 p.m., Town Supervisor William Flood called the meeting to order and. Second. By Councilman. Uh, introduced the following resolution to wit, whereas Siland, Siland Commercial LLC commenced a tax, I don't know how I pronounce that, Satoria? Sertiorari. That's right. <laughs> proceeding the uh, proceedings challenging the 2012 assessment, the real property uh, located in the town of Amenia on Route 22 and designated by tax identification numbers 7066-00-91. 0219 and 7066-00-95411 uh, property and whereas the town is prepared to enter in a consent order of, con of settlement and compromise the copy of which is attached here to resolving the proceedings by reducing the 2012 assessed value of the properties as follows. Parcel Route 22 bearing tax ID identification number uh, 7066-00-910219, current assessment 294, settlement assessment 2385, change 555, parcel number 2, route 22 bearing tax identification number 7066-00-954116, current assessment 219, settlement assessment uh, change 89,000. Uh, whereas, pursuant to the terms of the consent order, the petitioner has agreed to waive any refund from the town of Mini for town taxes or town special district taxes paid by the petitioner in excess of what taxes would have been uh, in the assess assessment for 2012 and have been determined by the consent order. Whereas, the town board concludes that it's in its best interest of the town of Mini to settle the proceedings without further cost or risk to the town on these terms and conditions. Um, now, therefore, be resolved the town board of town of Mini hereby authorizes the settlement of the proceedings pursuant to terms and conditions contained in, contained in the attached consent order and it is further resolved that the town assessor for, or the town the attorney for the town are hereby authorized to execute any file and file any documents necessary to effectuate this settlement to consent to the entry of an appropriate court order required to implement this settlement and to discontinue the proceedings with prejudged and <coughs> including but not limited to the attached consent order. Yes. Councilwoman Hitzelberger? Yes. Councilwoman Doyle? Is that absent? Councilwoman Brody? Yes. And Councilwoman Amy? Yes. Next one is 60, 71. 71. <coughs> Resolution of authorized the settlement of Higher Ground Country Club, LLC, tax tutorial proceeding. At a regular meeting of the Town of Amini, Town Board, the Town of Amini held at the Amini Town Hall 
on the 24th day of October 2013 at 7 p.m. Town Supervisor William Flood called the meeting to order and seconded by. Second. Intru introduced the following resolution to wit, whereas Higher Ground uh, Country Club LLC commenced a tax tutorial proceeding to proceeding challenge in the 2012 assessment for real property in the town of Amenia located at 4589 Route 22, bearing tax identification number 7066-00-860725. 5021 Route 44, bearing tax identification number 7067-00-628131 Route 44, bearing tax identification number 7066-00-670717 and 4655 Route 22, bearing identification number 7066-00-732818 dash seven three two eight one and whereas the town meeting is prepared to enter the consent order of settlement and whereas uh, and compromise a copy of which is attached here to resolving the proceedings by reducing the 2012 assessed values as following uh, four five eight nine route 22 bearing tax ID number seven zero six six dash zero zero dash eight six zero seven two five current assessment 180 uh, settlement assessment 100 change 80,000 parcel 5021 route 44 bearing uh, tax identification number 7067-00-628131 current assessment 405400 uh, settlement assessment 405400 zero change route 44 <laughs> Bearing tax identification number 7066-00-670717. Uh, current assessment 1,338,500. Uh, settlement assessment 884,900. Change is $453,600. Uh, 4655 Route 22 bearing tax identification number 7066-00-670. 732810 current assessment 9,200,000 settlement assessment was 5 million change is 4,200,000 and whereas pursuant to the terms of the consent order the petitioners agreed to waive any refund from the town of Amenia for town taxes or, or the town special district taxes paid by the petitioner in excess of what the taxes would have been if the assessment of 2012 has been determined by the consent order and whereas the town board concludes that it is in the best interest of the town of Amina to settle a proceeding without further cost or risk to the town on those terms and conditions. Now therefore be resolved that by the town of board of the town of Amina hereby authorizes the settlement of, of proceedings pursuant to the terms and conditions contained in the attached consent order and is further resolved that the town assessor and the, or the town attorney for the town, town are hereby authorized to execute and file any do documents necessary to effectuate this settlement, to consent to the entry of an ap appropriate court order required to implement this settlement and to discontinue the proceedings with prejudice, prejudice, including but not limited to the attached order consent. And the foregoing resolution was adopted with all councilmen voting as follows. Supervisor Fly? Yes. Councilman Hensselberger? Yes. Councilman Hensselberger? Yes. Councilman, uh, Doyle's absent, Councilwoman Brody. Yes. And Councilwoman Mayor. Yes. Did they get a refund from the school district? They they will. Um, how much was that? A hundred and I'd have to to calculate. I mean, they're going to get significant, substantial refund, uh, refund, especially on the higher ground. Yeah. I thought they waived the right for a refund. Only for the town. Oh, only for the town. Okay. Uh, resolution AT and T amendment to cell tower agreement. We discussed this uh, last meeting. And there are some questions about the fees. There's an increase in the fees of seven hundred thirty-six dollars and sixty-two cents. And um, anybody get a chance to read this? I just had a, I had a question. I mean, I, I was asking about that when they said 50% of what they 
they were increasing it by 50 percent. They didn't say what the basis was. 50 percent of what they had originally, or 50 percent of what they, because they've already added to it. I think the. the um, The letter from uh, Crown Communications said that the increase in the amount is the 700, I can't recall, I don't have it in front of me, $730 or $50, something like that. Pursuant to, there's a master maintenance agreement or um, an agreement between the town and Crown or the um, pre uh, Oh, this is not the AT and T. This is the one on Washington Court. That's why. That's the same one. Right. I was questioning. I thought this was the AT and T that's on Delaware and Hill. Okay. Which they just went through. That's what I thought. This increase. I don't think these people have done anything in quite a while. Okay. But pursuant to the agreement okay. between the town and yeah. Um, Crown, you each, Crown keeps 50% of the rental revenue and the other 50% goes to the town. So the increase in the rental amount as a result of this amendment, half of that amount will go to the town, half goes to Crown. Half of the 736? Correct. Yeah. Just the rental, not the revenue. Mm -hmm. just, uh, <laughs> just the rental. Okay. Okay. Resolution number 73. Two. Two. Of 2013. Resolution authorizing Second Amendment to Tower and Land Space Lease Agreement with New Singular Wireless, P PCS, at a regular meeting of the Town Board of the Town of Amenia, held at the Town Hall, on the 24th day of October, 2013 at 7 p.m. Um, I need a second. Second. By council, and, uh, and I'll make the other, I'll make the other. I'll do second. Did someone second? Yeah, Gretchen yeah. Oh, okay. Move to the, follow, the following resolution to wit, whereas the town of Amenia owns a municipal cell tower and a property in the town located at 12 Washington Court. And whereas on or about March 13th, 2013, 2203, the town of Amenia and Dutchess County Cellular Telephone Company, Inc., DBA Cellular One, a subsidiary of American Cellular Co Corporation and a predecessor in interest to New Singular wires, Wireless, PCS, entered into the Tower of Land Space Lease Agreement, whereby New Singular Wireless leased a portion of the cell tower and the land owned by the town, located at 12 Washington Tor Court for the purpose of transmitting wireless singles, signals and maintaining an equipment shelter. And whereas on or about March 13, 2003, the town and new singular wireless entered into the First Amendment to the Tower and Land Space Lease Agreement, whereas whereby new singular wireless was allowed to space its equipment on a temporary tower while a permanent tower was con being constructed, and whereas new singular wireless tower New singular wireless in the town now wish to enter into a second amended amendment to the agreement to the tower land space lease agreement in order to modify certain terms of the agreement, including the one the definition of lease space contained in the agreement, two the description specification of the equipment to be placed by the tower uh, by new singular wireless, and three increasing the fee paid by new singular wireless under the agreement. And whereas the form of the second amendment to the tower land space lease agreements attached here too, and whereas is the approval and execution of the Second Amendment to the Tower and Land Space Lease Agreement is a type two action under New York State Environmental Quality Review Act seeker and therefore not subject to an environmental review. And now therefore be resolved that the Town Board hereby approves the Second Amendment to the Town and Land Space Lease Agreement in the form attached here too, and authorizes the Town Supervisor to sign the Second Amendment to the Tower and Land Space Lease Agreement on behalf of the Town. And it's further resolved that the Town Board hereby authorize the Town Supervisor to sign any additional documents that may be necessary to effectuate the Second Amendment to the Tower and Land Space Lease Agreement and make such administrative and ministerial action as may be necessary to effectuate the terms of this resolution. 
The following resolution is voted upon all councilmen and councilwomen voting as. Supervisor Clark? Yes. Councilwoman Pennsylvania? Yes. Councilwoman Doyle's absent. Councilwoman Lima? Yes. And Councilwoman Brody? Yes. Today's the 24th, right? Resolution number 73 of 2013, transfer of funds, whereas the town board has the authority to transfer funds when necessary and unanticipated to amend the budget, and whereas the town budget line 2089.1.0 requires an increase in the amount of $470. Dance funds are, were received from the New York State Office of Children and Family Services for our dance program, and whereas the town budget line 71504.1.32 requires an increase in the amount of $470 for the purpose of dance instructors and fees. Whereas the town budget line 51104.3, general repairs requires an increase in the amount of $5,000 for the purpose of item four dirt for dirt roads being washed out due to heavy rain this summer. And whereas the town budget line 51424.3.00, snow removal requires a decrease in the amount of $5,000. $5, and whereas the town budget line 80201.100 planning personal services requires an increase in the amount of $1,224.02 for the purpose of personal services for Susan Metcalf and the town budget line 31201.1 police and councils requires an increase in the amount of $1425 for the purpose of personal services and whereas the town budget line 19004.1.49 Special items contingencies requires a decrease in the amount of $1,238.27. And whereas the town budget line 13104.1.40, Director of Finance, requires an increase in the amount of $81 for accounting support. And town budget line 1354.1.119, Assessor's Contracts, requires an increase in the amount of $80.90 for payments. To Commissioner of Finance for county chargeback related to the production of assessment rolls and bills. And town budget line 13554.01.44 uh, requires an increase in the amount of $1,231.50 for legal fees to Daniels Porco and Lusardi, LLP, the tax searcheries. And whereas the town budget line 19004.1.49 requires a decrease in the amount of 1393.91. And whereas the town budget line 14204.1.00 requires an increase in the amount of 111,120.91 for the purpose of attorney's fees to Daniels, Parco, Lothardi, LLP, and Whitman, Osterman, and Hannah, LLP. And whereas the town board, the town budget line 14204.1.139 requires a decrease in the amount of eleven thousand one twenty ninety one and whereas the town budget line six seven seven two four point one point eight eight uh, programs for aging picnic requires an increase in the amount of four hundred dollars and twenty cents for the purpose of food and supplies for the senior picnic and whereas the town budget line seven one four oh four point one point nine four grant playgrounds uh, 
the Easter egg hunt requires a decrease in the amount of 230, 233.50. And the budget line, 67724.1.87 programs for aging senior trips requires a decrease in the amount of 166.70. And whereas the town budget line, 71104.1 Amenia Park, requires an increase in the amount of $3,912.05 for Lakota Electric for emergency repairs at Beekman Park. And whereas the town budget line 7101.1.104.40, uh, rec director, recreation director requires a decrease in the amount of uh, $3,912.05. Whereas the town budget line 90508.1.00, unemployment insurance requires an increase in the amount of $624 for the purpose of unemployment sh benefits is James Fraley. And the town budget line 97897.1.00 requires an increase in the amount of $26.42 for the purpose of interest charge on the town's visa account. And whereas the town budget line 19004.1.49 requires a decrease in the amount of $650.42. And whereas the town budget line 83104.6 administration requires an increase in the amount of $1,200 for the purpose of attorney fees to 12 Daniels, Porco, and Lusardi, LLP, and whereas the town budget line 83404.6.0 transmission distribution requires a decrease in the amount of $1,200. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the town board authorizes the transfer of necessary budget lines to proceed the transaction. I make that motion. A second. Councilman Crody? Yes. Councilman Hitzelberger? Yes. Councilman Reamer? Yes. And Mr. Reza Yes. One more. Where are we, 74? Mm -hmm. Yes. Resolution number 74. 2013 resolution adopting the town credit card use policy at a meeting of the town board of the town of Amenia held at the town of Amenia Town Hall on the 24th day of October 2013 at 7 p.m. Supervisor William Flood seconded by council person second Darlene Reamer moved that the following resolution to wit whereas the town board is determined that it is necessary and in the best interest of the town to adopt a credit card credit use credit card use policy which sets sets forth the criteria for the use of the Town of Amenia credit card for the purpose of conducting town businesses. And whereas the Town Board is prepared of such a policy, which is attached here too, and whereas the Town Board is determined that adopting such a credit card use policy is a type two action under the New York State Environmental Quality <coughs> Review Act and is not therefore exempt from environmental review. Now therefore, it resolved the Town Board hereby adopts the attached credit card use policy as a credit card use policy of the Town of Amenia and be it further resolved that the town board hereby establish a single purchase limit on the town of Amenia credit card in the amount of $1,000 and that such single purchase limit shall not be changed except by adoption or other resolution by the town board members. Um, Supervisor Flood. Do we want to take a look at this? Self-explanatory.
Councilman Hitzelberger? Do we have to put something in here that specifically states that if you use the credit card for payment that you still can't bypass the purchase order um, requirements? Or is that covered with something else? I think the only time that they use the credit card is for um, uh, recreation, when they buy equipment. Uh, I know we've, I've used it for, uh, uh, I didn't. We did online purchases for tape backups. Yeah. And then, um, senior picnic. Senior picnic, did they yeah. use it? Don't you use that? Or is that Sam's Club? No, it was put on a credit card. That's oh. what the interest yeah, was the $26 for, uh, in interest rate to pay. No, Sam, I couldn't use it for Sam's Club. Sam's Club won't take Visa. I used it for Walmart. Um, recreation uses it on their field trips. Yeah, recreation uses it. And then I know they buy because it's locked. Upstairs, it's locked somewhere. They uh, they use it um, for s purchases sometimes in the offices. Association of towns when we're registering. Yeah. And, it, and every every time anybody uses it, it's recorded. Right. It's and what it was used for. Yeah. And it's signed out if you need Mary it. Mary has signed records, out. so everyone you know, so they know where it is. Yeah, we have to bring receipts and yep. and do a voucher at that time. But this is required by the state. Fine. So. Yes. Oh. So there are safeguards <laughs> in place for, for it. Councilman Prody? Yes. And Councilman Raymer? Yes. <clears throat> the resolution uh, suggestions for uh, Senior Citizen or su Citizen of the Year, Amini Wase. Anyone can email or write or make suggestions for either. Uh, town board meeting dates for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Move to change the dates. November 28th is Thanksgiving. So did you want to go to the Thursday before? That'd be two Thursdays back to that. For one month, should be okay. So we'll move it on the 21st. What day? Maybe the 20th. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait a minute, I'm sorry. The 21st. November 21st? Yeah. What about uh, December? Are you just doing the Thursday before? Or are you just asking yeah. for the dates? Okay, so it then is. it's Thursday the 19th. It's 19th, okay? Yeah. That's fine. Just the Thursday before. I have a letter from um, John Fenton, which you received, I think, today. Subject is uh, update on Bill Henry and unsafe building and illegal uses of structure and property. Dear town met board members, on October 10, 2013, I submitted a letter to the town board requesting your authorization of the the demolition and removal of the main barn located on Mr. William Henry's property on 426 Old Route 22, Wasake. I am withdrawing that request. Mr. Henry is in the process of complying with the town's order and is making a strong effort to into re remediating the zoning violations that presently exist. On October 7, 2013, I issued two appearance tickets to Mr. Henry for the violations of the building zoning code. On October 21st, 2013, Mr. Henry submitted an engineer's uh, report addressing the structural deficiencies and applied and paid for a building permit. Mr. Henry also requested an extension to have the structural deficiencies corrected since he would not be able to comply with the October 22nd, 2013 repair deadline. Mr. Henry is scheduled for a structural inspection on October 21st, 2013 at 2 p.m. This inspection is to confirm code compliance on the repairs. Mr. Henry is also scheduled for court on November 5th. 2013 at November at 5 p.m. for the present zoning use violation that still exists. If you have any questions, please reach me, John Fenton. Good. I have another letter from John Fenton, the town board members, request for three bids for lawn mowing and weed removal. Uh, 
uh, dear town board and requesting the town board to allow the town clerk to request three bids on the local television station 22 for work of lawn mowing and weed removal of 4813 Route 22 in Union York, Amenia Motors. This property has been, continue, has been in continuous violation of New York State property value of New York State property maintenance code section 302.4 high grass and weeds not to exceed 10 inches. This property also violates the town's abandoned property law is in the process of being prosecuted. Attached is the notice of violation in order to remedy which was sent to the owner, the property owner on October 7th, 2013. The notice was sent certified in regular mail. I also spoke with the owner and verbally told him about the violation over the phone. If you have any questions, please, please feel free to call John. So we need to make a motion to allow the town clerk to request three bids for the work of lawn mowing and weed removal of 4813 Route 22 in me in New York. Um, and then whatever that cost will be uh, levied onto the owner's taxes. I'm surprised that this guy hasn't come. He's a pretty nice guy. What you do is before you levy on the taxes, town will do the work, and then you send him a notice oh, that nice. so he's got the um, chance to pay it himself, and, and the notice you say if he doesn't. You know, he, Living on to his taxes. Right. Mm -hmm. My understanding was that the person he hired to do it did not follow through. Um, he paid a person to cut the grass and it didn't happen. So I think he'll rectify it pretty soon. Yeah, I, I would think so. He's a, he, yeah, he's yeah, a business he's a nice he's guy. Nice guy. I don't think he was aware of it. <coughs> so are we requesting bids? Or I mean, it's been like that for a long time. For lawn mowing or we I don't, I, I'm not in favor of doing this. I think the guy, they should reach out to this guy again. Bill Lynch, give him a call. Huh? Give him a call. He already has. He's John Fenton did. Days, but I know he travels a lot, so it's probably... That was only the 10 days was really for him, possibly only the 19th if he thought business days, so. He only had just, it for a little while. Yeah, just give him a call. All right. Service Victoria got a bid, one or two bids. Uh, one yeah, this for was, this was a project in the making trying to find someone to mm. who cleans this size boiler. I um, had a company called uh, Defue Energy Company come and they do commercial boilers, but they do small commercial boilers, so they wouldn't touch it. And I called, uh, ended up, we do have a estimate from John Scott, who does our, uh, takes care of the boiler on a regular basis. So I ended up calling Troy Boiler Works, and they recommended this Ashley Mechanical Company, who came down and actually, um, you know, looked at the boilers and gave us an estimate. It's $3,200, and the burner service cost was $1,004, um, uh, what's John's? John's is 1300 uh, Yeah. How much? 1300 $1, Yeah, 150 for materials and 1150 for labor. I'll make a motion to accept the bid of John Scott. I second. So we can let him know. And go ahead and yeah. do the cleaning. He as did soon turn as the possible. heat on yesterday. Right? Is yesterday he turned it on? It's nice and warm in here. In a case like this, Ian, where someone has been involved in working for the town. Like when we took over this building, you know, we came in in late um, 2010. Um, 
couldn't we just have the best value since someone is familiar with the process? Or do we really have to go out for three bids for this particular? Well, we need to get three prices. Well, this is the, yeah. but the best you, the best value right. local law that you adopted doesn't excuse the bidding requirements. It's just how you award the contract. And that only applies to purchase contracts, not uh, public work. Not so service. it depends on what your um, what type of work you're looking to do. And you you still have to comply with the bidding requirements. Um, and advertising for bids if you're over those okay. monetary thresholds. Okay. Um, we have a letter from John Fenton again. This is him. We've 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 had this before. Uh, B board has been requesting to meet with supervisor, deputy supervisor, so she can discuss her concerns and complaints about the unpaid invoices from Whitman, Osterman, and Hannah. The invoice was delivered to Mrs. Boyd back on July 23rd, 2013, and the firm has given Mrs. Boyd a few options on payment, which she ignored. Mrs. Boyd also gave, the, gave me a resolution of the bill and adjusted it to what she felt was reasonable. I forwarded her res uh, revision to the firm for comment, and they responded to the revisions. The revision was unacceptable. I sent the Boyds a final 30-day notice to pay the invoice to the amount to be levied on their taxes. The Boyds have received their variance but have not received their CO, CFO to occupy the structure. To date, the law firm has not received any payment on this invoice. Mrs. Boyd said the biggest issue about the invoice were the charges she received from any correspondence between Dave Everett and Monty uh, Robebear's attorney. After reviewing the invoice, I cannot find any such charges. Please advise, John. So you have the uh, bill here. It's five thousand three hundred sixty-seven dollars and fifty-four cents. Uh, well, I think it's a benefit to the person. I mean, when she first came before the ZBA, from what my understanding is that um, she would have the determination would have been to remove the the, uh, the mobile home that was on the property. So, in view of how this was all resolved, she could actually keep the keep the building on the property. So, it has value to her that um, she gained through this whole process that she wouldn't have had otherwise. Um, so, I comment. I'm big boy. Oh. <coughs> I have met with you once, correct? I'm, I'm I met sorry? I met with you once, you and John. You did, right. and I got no response. I finally heard from John not that long ago, and he said that he had sent me emails, but he didn't send it to the right email address. Okay. And I'll, as I'll, far as these notices about payment, and I never responded, I never received them until like last week. All right. Sure, you want to give John a call, uh, and we'll set up a meeting. Or I'll have John give you a call on Tuesday. And we'll set up a meeting. Well, who's the meeting going to be with? Be myself and John, and whoever else you want. I'd like to meet with the board. The whole board? Yeah. That has to be public. It has to be a public it meeting. It has to be public. Because I don't understand. This is a private matter. It, it's finances. Unless I don't you think want to that meet it's with anything. us individually. We could do that. I'd already sent an email to meet with you, and I didn't get a response. Or I should say John sent the email to you. I think and he I just sent it. Just I sent think it. he just sent it. Because I thought I was, um, I talked to John about it, and I just, um, from what I understood, he was going to meet with, that the, you were going to meet with the supervisor first. It, originally we were going to meet, and then they said that it would be best that I met with both of you. Well, we can do that. 
but you can I mean you could meet with each of the board members individually that would be fine like to. I'd like to do that if they okay I'll be in touch Peak and Leo Blackman, members of the town board, please find the attached revised retainer agreement from Whitman Osterman, Hannah for Planning Board and Zoning Board of Legal Services, not accommodated by applicant escrow. Leo and I understand that there was not sufficient budget available in, in town, <coughs> town board's 2014 estimated planning board and Zoning Board of Appeals general line to accommodate the previously submitted retainer cap. As such, David Everett has been provided a re the revised agreement, which we understand can be uh, accommodated under the available budget. Please let me know at ASAP if you have any questions or concerns regarding the attachment. We would be happy to meet with the board at your convenience for further discussion. Thank you for consideration of the expeditious resolution. Nina Peak and Leo Blackburn. They changed their um, fee structure a little bit. Well, it fits within our budget. Yeah. Yeah, they reduce the reduce the hourly rates. I'd like to have more time to look it over. We only got it this afternoon. Sure. Well, when do we appoint attorneys? That's that's at the reorg, right? Yep. So this doesn't get done anyway at this point. What? Oh. The agreement? Mm. Yeah, this is for so starting 2014. Right. 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 Mm. Well, it's nice to see the rates are going down. Maybe I'm well, I think so well. To me, it's, a, a, <coughs> it's very favorable. He certainly is doing a great job. I had very favorable uh, conversation with John Fenton and Sue Metcalf saying that they were all, he was doing an impeccable job for all the um, issues that were being brought to their attention and very timely. <coughs> but I'm wondering if John Fenton is using him on a regular basis for things like the McHenry property for zoning issues as well, or is that something that you've been working with more, uh, Ian? I mean, I don't know what. It, my question is for zoning enforcement questions. Is it, it he, does he sometimes use David Everett? And sometimes use you depending I on what the know. question. I don't know. I mean, I've spoken to John about zoning issues. Um, nothing's come up recently, but I don't know if there are any. If there's anything going on that he's needed uh, assistance with. Yeah. Well, advice. there's quite a bit with the um, the McHenry property. That that's probably very. Yeah, involved. that I have. He hasn't spoken to me about that. Okay. So I'm just I'm unclear yet. How much, how many people are using uh, David Everett at this point? But I think planning and zoning so certainly should have access to a right. good I, planning I, attorney. Planning, I agree. Land use planning attorney. And I think, you know, we pulled out, John Fenton came in with a budget for uh, council, and we pulled out, you know, his amount. So um, it, I think that helped on the planning board and CBA level because I think. John was in that loop, and every everything adds up. You know, 15, 20 minutes, half hour. Right. In the in the emails that transpired. Right. So, right. Um, I think if we can just confine Dave Everett to the planning board and the ZBA on the issues, big issues coming before the town. Right. I think we'll be in good shape. We'll be under control. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping. Town of Amina, Dutchess County, New York. Abstract of audited vouchers for period 10-1-2013 through 10-25-2013. Grand total of all vouchers is $438,137.63. I hereby certify that the vouchers listed on this abstract for this period, consisting of these attached pages, were audited and allowed in the amount shown. Authorization is hereby given and directions made to pay each of the claimants the amount opposite his name. So I don't know if you've all read it. 
You've all signed. Have you all signed the vouchers yet, or no? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All, right, all the vouchers are signed. Yeah. Right. So we and I think I think the public needs to know this new process because right. we, we don't have these piles of vouchers anymore. <coughs> that are, you know, sometimes done so quickly that we don't have a chance to look at all of them. You know, each one of us is assigned a group. I'm assigned to review water and highway, and as well as Gretchen and everybody else does the general, and Bill does the whole gamut. So now the process is each one of us gets to review all of the vouchers for everything that happens with the town. So it gives all of us an overview of how the money is spent. And I think it's much more beneficial, it is for me, because I never got to see the general until this recent change. So I think it benefits all of us here at the table and also the public to get a figure at the end of the month that what bills are being paid, the abstract and the total amount, so that you get an idea of the transactions that happen throughout the month and report it as one figure. So. This is the process recommended by the controller's office. So instead of us looking at the looking at the vouchers and the bills the night of the meeting, we can come in at, <clears throat> when we have time to look through all the bills and the vouchers and see if we have any questions. Yeah, so all the questions we have, if we have any, get answered in the process before this abstract is developed. So it's very helpful. It's actually worked out pretty well. Yeah. And uh, the only thing that we actually do at the meeting is to make a motion to um, for the supervisor to pay claims for the grand total of all vouchers is $438,137.63. And I make that motion. I'll second that. Councilman Brody? Yes. Councilman Hitzelberger? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. And Supervisor Flood? Yes. Um, we have a letter from the Recreate New York Smart Home Bio Program. It's from the final notice and public review of a proposed activity in a 100 year floodplain. As you know, most of us that are in the floodplain have been notified by the federal government and your insurance company that you have to buy flood insurance. Um, and I believe this is if there's a disaster that they will buy your property. The state has allocated 1.7 billion funds for acquisition, demolition, reconstruction, improvement, finance, and use of the existing properties in the most impacted municipalities and counties um, in the floodplain. So if there is a major flood, I know that they will they will pick up the cost of the buy your property out and so on and so forth. Will be purchased by the state structures around the on the properties will be removed so the, the land reverts to its natural state. The project aims to preserve our natural floodplain, prevent future dam future damage to homes and businesses, promote uniform land uses and assist those impacted by Hurricane Sandy, Irene, and Tropical Storm Lee. Yeah, this should be put on the website. I think the public needs to be yeah. aware of this. That should be out on the web. If you haven't got the notification, you're getting, you'll, well, I'm sure all of them should be out there. If you have a property that's near, it's in the floodplain, you're getting notified. You have to have flood insurance. Um, just a couple other things. The, uh, the, then by the, the, uh, what's it, Thomas Young Park, the, Closure of the landfill is, is moving right along now. They're getting close. Looks beautiful from the hill. Uh, I was over there the other day and walked it with them. Um, they're they're close. Yeah, I did. I walked it with them too the other day because I hadn't been there in quite a while. And they said they hoped to be out of there before Thanksgiving. Yeah, that's what they're hoping for. And um, it was really, you know, kind of interesting to see all the work they've done. Their um, seeding with a mixture of grasses and wildflowers that are in, um, native to the area. Um, the grass hasn't come up as much as I thought, but they said by the spring, it will, you know, it, there will be, you know, a, it will be a lot better um, because 
They did get held up because we had the heavy rains a few months ago, which is why they're still working there. Um, the other thing they told me is that <clears throat> as the pond is being restored, they're seeing much more wildlife there. Um, they've even noticed an osprey diving down and catching the fish. And I think he, uh, Ron from CT Mills said he took a picture of it. Um, besides, um, there's blue heron and, and geese. And, you know, there's some water snakes. They watch this brown water snake come out of the water with a bullhead in its mouth. <laughs> And they also watched a snapping turtle bury eggs. So, you know, the wildlife is, you know, coming back to the pond. So it's going to be a beautiful area for people to visit once it gets finished. Look this beautiful view back there. It's amazing the difference. I did have a question um, from a citizen who was concerned about the uh, all the earth moving equipment and and such that was sitting there but i assured them uh, you know that at times they were set back uh in time but the reality is is that they submitted bids yes they found additional pcbs yes we had to increase to some degree some of the cost involved mm -hmm. but those are fixed costs so if you are worried about them taking longer than they thought you know they are capped. I mean, this is the amount of money that we have agreed to do it. So if you just see that there's been delays, it doesn't necessarily impact each day that we're having to pay them for their earth moving equipment and such. But I think we've done, you know, Bill has done a good job and Sherry has done a good job trying to get reimbursed for all of the money that is coming to us from EFC and from all from DEC, all the agencies. So we're not paying the full bill on any of this at all. We're, we're only owed 25% is our share and all of that paperwork has had to been uh, managed very carefully and has been done I believe very well by our bookkeeper so yeah, we yeah, have a lot very, to be very, thankful very for. Very particular. And, thank and God CT Mail. And CT Mail done it. She's Extremely done, good. Done an incredible job. So we've been very very fortunate I think in getting through this as well as we have. Uh -huh. The other way we've really uh, saved costs, uh, in my conversation with Ron from CT Mail, he said that um, Kip Weigert from the uh, old A uh, Allen property was, um, uh, was really saved a lot of money. They needed a specific mix of compost and topsoil, and he was able to provide it for them as well as other materials. So that really saved on transportation costs you know, getting the right materials there um, to cover the cap. And we could have owned that property. <laughs> That's so sad. I know that would have been the real oh, well. savings, but. But at least we did get a good price. The time was right. You know, the, the bids came in low, so. It made a huge good. difference. Yes. Huge difference. I yep. mean, the original, I mean, we had originally said five, then it, they estimated at 10 million. And then we came down to four, four, five four, when nine, the, the contracts came in, and so you know we've been really, really doing better than lucky. Yeah. Even with the well, there are there were some extras because they found additional, uh, additional garbage PCBs outside of the original um, line of the landfill, so that was an extra. And we I, they took them out. I think three weeks ago, I went down and signed the uh, paperwork that was done. So that's the uh, end of it. And the, they're mixing it with rye grass, so that sh it should turn green. It's, it's actually turning green now, so it should grow a little bit anyway. And they have to come back if there's any um, washouts and stuff. They have to they have to monitor this thing for the next couple of years anyway. So. And Sharon is going to be the one who maintains and right. mows it at their cost for the next 30 years. So. That's their share of having the part, their part in that landfill closure. And so we don't have any maintenance issues that I know of. Correct. Uh, some public announcements of Woods of Terror, Haunted Hayride and Walk, October 25th and 26th at 7.30 to 10 p.m. Parking and Amenia Fire Company, admission $5 per person. Uh, food and drinks available for, for purchase by the Media Fire Company. And more information, uh, find a friend at us on Facebook. 
It's for the Prospect Pig Club. Media Recreation Cheerleading pre uh, presents uh, Winter Carnival Fundraiser, Friday, November 15th, 5 to 8 p.m. at the town, Mini Town Hall. We'll be having games, activities, tag sale raffles, and 50-50 raffle. We'll be also selling re refreshments. Please come and join us for an evening of fun. What time is that? I'm sorry. What time? time? Cheerleaders? Eight, five. five to eight. Okay, thanks. Um, we do this now or after? We do it now. We do it now? You have uh, Gretchen's hours for her retirement, which is 3.08 hours. <laughs> um, on one page, 148.61 on the other. 122.97 and 116.97 hours, which she's uh, required to uh, post, and we have to accept it to uh, send to the New York State Retirement. I'll make a motion we accept it. Second. Councilwoman Meemer? Yes. Councilwoman Brody? Yes. Councilwoman Kensenberger? Yes. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. And to the Yes. Actually, Councilwoman Hitzelberger should have abstained. Any board members have anything? I do have um, a, a question about the mapping that we were going to um, yes. We talked update. about that. Okay, so we're yep. done. Yeah, so I'm going to uh, okay. call the county you okay. know, to see the process to update the maps that we have. Excellent. And all of that. So I did talk to Nola Hooper and okay. Keely Solomon and yep. uh, Jennifer Torini is, I can forward you the name of the person, and Bob Wills. Okay. They're ready to hear from us, and Bob is the head of the mapping, but Jennifer has done the mapping for us, and Mark would be happy to help with any questions that you might have bringing okay. them up to date. Mark did think that um, it would be helpful to include in our zoning text, I know it's mostly mapping, but include in the zoning text the intent that they had to have include all of the active permitted mines at the time. So I don't know how to, if you do a zoning text amendment and the maps, is that more complex than well, just doing the maps? Pardon? They have to agree, so that has to be done. Well, there was no reference to that in the text, zoning text. There, I don't. He couldn't find it anyway. No reference There to was no reference to how those maps were, the intent behind the line, the boundaries that okay. they included in the SMO district. Okay. It was implied, but it wasn't, I mean. Right, it just wasn't we documented. On this thing. We probably just didn't say the words. It just got, when yeah. the maps, Mark was doing the mapping, yeah. and Joel Russell was doing the text, and right. some of those little last details didn't all get perfectly aligned. I mean, it was hard to pull it all together, so it's one of the things that he thought should be cleaned up. Mm -hmm. Okay. You'd have to do it by local law right. uh, to amend the zoning law. Um. That constitutes that zoning. <coughs> change it. You have to go through all the process that you'd have to do. Yeah, you Public do hearings, the right? whole thing. Sure, just like any local law, you've got to. Yeah. So they have, so they have to go through the whole process. It would be just like any other amendment to your town code by local law, and you've got to follow seeker, and you've done public hearing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because to change the zoning law, you will have to uh, make referral to Dutchess County Planning. Well, we did, yeah, we did in the uh, scenic protection overlay. We went through that whole process. Then we had the we'll have to do hearing. the same thing as Correct. my guest to do it all properly. Yeah. What my husband said is that contrary to my earlier thinking, the zoning language does not contain any reference to the SMO boundaries being based on existing active DEC mining permits. 
I think there are two routes to follow. One is changing, modifying the boundaries, and that would mean all the bound, you know, making sure everything is to exactly match the existing active mining permits, essentially updating and correcting the zoning maps using state-of-the-art technology. But perhaps it's easier to use the non-conforming uses, which makes provision for the continuation of active but previously permitted uses, i.e. the life of the mine boundary represents a current DEC permit and the mining phase extension for which Ian is applying is simply an administrative requirement of the DEC. Uh, you know, I can give this to you, Ian, if sure. that helps. But he did not find any text that would support the intent that they had in the mm -hmm. putting the boundaries exactly where the DEC had mapped the active, currently permitted mines at the time. All this has to do with 3.5 acres <laughs> that was left out inadvertently. And they used the DEC maps. The DEC had an active permitted permit that Ian had been paying every single year on. Uh, but it, it just, for some reason, that sliver of land that we're hoping to get reclaimed and completed just didn't get included. And it was an oversight, that's all. Anyone else? So, so what do we have to do next? Well, um, that's going to be part of the meeting with the planning board, I would assume, right? So this has got to be done with the planning board when we meet with the... Uh, well, you could discuss it right. with them. You, know. you might as well do it all in one shot, all in one Probably makes sense. Yeah. 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 Right, that way it's um, done. But you're looking to, you're going to amend the, or enlarge the SMO to include that three and a half acre? Yes. Yes. Parcel, okay. Well, you could start the paperwork on that though, right? No, it's more no, than that. No, I think we need to discuss it. Right. Okay. Yeah. And then the other thing I had, if um, I may, is that uh, the dance program is going well. They have uh, an extra teen class that they want to add, and I have put in vouchers. We have paid the dance teacher in the past $3,500, and we didn't have enough to cover her for four classes, but um, we do have enough this year. We have 5000 $450 based on three grants and one uh, donation. And so I have enough to pay her for $4,000 and the assistant would be 1000 up from 750 And we have done this in the past to pr provide four classes. The one class that we want to add would be the teens and then the other two is are taking a private lesson that will that have been in the program for since they were in second grade probably. So mm -hmm. they are doing their own choreography and she wants to work with them individually. So I am suggesting that we go ahead and pay 4,000 to the dance instructor and 1,000 for the assistant. Should I make a motion? Yes. I'll make a motion that we increase the pay as stated. Find. Um, well, grants when you get them, you should use the money as you had planned, had suggested, and those all were in support of personnel line. There is five thousand four hundred and seventy dollars in the personnel line, so I I would suggest we use the money as we in stated that we would use it. I would second that motion. Councilman Reamer? Yes. Councilman Brody? Yes. Councilman Hesburger? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Super Hesburger. I want to abstain. Bill? <laughs> oh, yes. I have an announcement from Smithfield Church. Uh, we have our annual turkey dinner coming up November 2nd. There are three servings, 445, 6 o'clock, and 715. Uh, the six o'clock is just about sold out, but there are seats available in the other time frames. Uh, tickets are twelve dollars, and uh, we do real turkeys and real ovens, and it's real food. It's and it's real good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, a regular. <laughs> so the one to call would be Frida and three seven three eight four five four to uh, make a reservation. We also do takeout, so if anyone. Uh, would like to just pick up a meal there, you can do that too. How did you do with your auction? 
We made uh, fifty three hundred dollars on our great white tent sale. Wonderful. Going to our columns, refurbishing our columns. So we're excited about that. We have our initial amount to do scope of work and all of that stuff. That's it for me. Well, I received a, a phone call from um, Blood Sanitation Service about an outstanding bill at, uh, for the town of Aminia for 2008-26-32. It was for, um, the, I guess, the break in the, the pipe that was hit when um, a contractor was doing work at the Cozy Corner uh, restaurant. Uh, it's part of the bill was paid by um, the owners and there was $2,100 left. Um, they said they sent a completed voucher on 10 to 12, but the amount still hasn't been paid. I think it's been a disputed amount between, you know, with the water district, but this work was done in 2012, on um, March 13, 2012, and flood sanitation has been waiting for their money all this time. Um, the amount is 2,826.32, and I think we have to, um, at this point, authorize the bookkeeper to um, pay this amount outside of the vouchers so they don't have to wait another month. I don't know what the board thinks. I'll make a motion that we authorize the payment of the outstanding bill. I just have a question. Is that town property? Is that no, it's that it was at the cozy corner. No, it was on the town property. It's in our right of way. That's our town what road. They did well, the right away. They hit there's a four inch main that goes from the water main, abandoned water mains across the property. They hit the water main mm -hmm. and they had to pump it out, which I paid 5000 to pump. This, this was theirs to pump. Apparently theirs they've been sending bills since that time. and Yeah, it's going to be sort of been paid. lagged around here for a while. There's no question yeah. about it. But yeah, I think we should pay it. Just pay it. I don't think it's right to keep them waiting any longer. They've waited over a year. I need a second. Yeah. Oh, second. Councilwoman Mayberry? Yes. Councilwoman Brody? Yes. Councilwoman Hitzberger? Yes. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. And Supervisor Clark? Uh, I'll abstain. I'll mention that we have our talent show once again on November 10th, and we're slowly but surely getting a lovely group of uh, talented citizens to come forward and you should come at uh, November 10th is a Sunday and it'll be at 2 o'clock in the gym and a uh, suggested donation of $5 will go towards improving Gridley Chapel's slate roof which the ridge cap is parts of it are missing and need to be repaired so it would be for a good cause and one come all. Oh, I know. Uh, hopefully, the town is the residents have seen the new uh, benches oh, and the new flower pots. They've done a beautiful job, a wonderful job of planting the trees. Um, it looks great. And uh, they're working on the post office, it's being painted. They're also doing the facade on uh, the Patel's building on uh, 343. That work is being completed now. I think we're waiting for the sign from the library. Right? Right, yeah, and, and new storm windows are. And new storm windows. Yeah, we can't do the landscaping until the sign goes in. Right, and then um, the, trees, the trees have been planted. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, they've done a beautiful, beautiful. job. They've done and a great Pete, job. Uh, is it Pete? Is that his name? Who's oh, uh, Pete Karras. Pete Karras. They've done an incredible job. Oh, he's given us more than our money's worth, yeah. that's for mm -hmm. sure. He's been there every step of the way. All the planters are leveled. He's uh, taking care of all the details. Is there any decision on what the barrels, where the barrels are going to go? They are, they are there. They yeah. are. They it's should just, be there. To me, it looks a little cluttered. Oh, know, the, oh, the, 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 the wooden barrels the will wooden go. Barrels. I'm sorry, they will go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
as far as I know. Are you? So are they going to plant the the concrete pots this year? Uh, we are there some are of the plantings perennials. are going to go in right. this year. So yes, we we've some. already received them. They got dirt in, but somebody has to plant. Yeah, we we've, we've got the plants. Boxes of them. <laughs> oh, great. So Indian artifact collection. Um, Ian mentioned that he has on display an Indian artifact collection that he acquired from, who was our past historian? Ken Hoadley. Ken Hoadley. Um, it's a fabulous collection. It's currently on display at a um, Roy Budnick's muse new museum in Poughkeepsie. It's coming home to Amenia or back to Ian on November 1st. <coughs> he would love to have it displayed here in Amenia. And I said that we would, I'd talk to the board about finding out what it would cost or what would be involved in trying to get a secure classroom or space for the in Indian artifact collection to be displayed on specific hours. I would also talk to the Amenia Historical Society about them providing some volunteers at certain open hours. It's apparently a very valuable display, so security would be the major issue. You couldn't just leave it open and hope for the best. So I assume that everybody would be supportive of having some open hours or availability for this collection. After it comes back to Amenia, it's a very large collection. Ian says that perhaps there will be a portion of it that he would like to have stay here. The rest goes to New York, will go to New York State Museum. That's part of a settlement that he did with the state. And I guess, um, I don't know all the details. I just know that he has made this happen. And it's, it's a very large collection. It's a very important collection. And I think we should know, we should have it here somewhere on display. So we'd have to have it in a secure place. Right. So mm -hmm. I'm guessing, you know, one of the classrooms could be locked, you know, physically locked, but I would also talk to the security about what else we would need to do, if anything. Um, would it fill an entire room, cla one I'm classroom? I'm it would. I talked to or him more. about a classroom, yeah. Oh. Being that we're going to keep here? No, I would think that, well, I don't know if it would be a long term. I would guess it would just be a specific exhibit for okay. let's say three months or a month, whatever the historical society and our be, own staff Yeah, I think it would be handle. great. We could highlight it with uh, some other event that would happen here so that, you know, like a grand opening. A big critical for the mass of people would come in, yeah. yeah. I think we could probably put up, up like a, a webcam, not a live stream, but feed it back onto a, a CPU that we have in-house for very low cost to add additional security. security to it. That might do it. Um, because you only have to monitor the entrance to the room. Um, and we would capture on tape anything that yeah, would leave. Yeah, and I, I, just, I, I just got the... Um, possibility. I just got the software inventory from BAS today, and I'm pretty sure we have some systems in-house that'll handle it. So we could do it at um, probably minimal to no cost. That'd be great. I will tell Ian that you're going to think about that a little bit more. Yeah. And I'll talk to the security system and maybe our insurance company and find out what we would need to mm -hmm. cover that kind of a cost. And meanwhile, maybe get Ian over here to look at the space and see what would be required. They're not habitable, right, yet? Or they are. The well, they're going to do the floors. We just voted to tonight the floors. the floors. Okay, good. We got the bid, so that's been done. All right. Well, I think we're, we're, we should put in our encouragement, right, to yeah. have something here. Actually, at some point, you should probably have the Historical Society here. They should be in this building. So. Yeah. So that's yeah. something. That's that what I would say, is yeah. that this might be the first step of opening that conversation about right. what it would take to put them in this building. Provide them. Yeah. We have some plenty space. of space here. Yeah. Okay. I think we should. Um, anybody? Other, any, oh, you. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, so you guys have the this month's update for the purchase order request and the supply request. If there's any conversation that needs to take place, all the information is there. Sherry went over it for you. Stanley, thank you for putting the Sharrows in on Mechanic Street. Um, however, uh, <laughs> 
However, uh, yeah, they're trying to bill Stanley for these. And yeah, no, I, I wasn't clear. You didn't install these? Or it, it was, first off, it, the monies to do yeah. the project, $500 was approved, um, which I thought was coming from the contingency. I approving it, but I thought Stan was installing these. But the money, the money to do it was not yeah. coming from highway. It was coming from contingency, and Easy Street did the installation of them. No, Easy Street does the installation. Yeah. So it was, That's we were given $500 and we only used 320, which yeah. was fantastic, but it's not supposed to come out of highway. It's supposed to come out of contingency and it, so it needs to have a funds well, that makes transfer. Sense. I just, well, it I needs, it needs it to come from, I'm sorry. It needs well, to come from contingency and put into a line before it can be right. paid. Right. It, you can't right. pay Does directly it, out of contingency. Right. It will be on, on our next, uh, uh, proposal or motion for moving so we funds. can do that we can do that next time because sure. yeah absolutely I just so if I there's a building line to... we have for the town for buildings maybe could come out come out of that. they suggested recreation I think that it has to be a um, you know you can't the, for accounting purposes it needs to go into the right bucket so it, it has to be relational yeah. so since so it's about bicycling it's cool, right, could be recreation we, we could put it in the recreation sure Recreation, they gave us a, no, 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 no. We we're just gonna, we're gonna put line. money into recreation so we can pay for the sheriff. It's just a vehicle. Just. It's just to yeah, hold the money. Right so the money what? will come out of contingency, go into a recreation line to be paid yeah. out. But it won't be coming out of your budget. So Stanley, no, it won't come out of highway. And they, they, they look really great, and we appreciate them. Um, the second thing I had was we had discussed not having the $500 nine viable reading surcharge for the water um, meters. When, when uh, Marco goes around and does the readings, he was charging $500 to people's accounts. And at the end of the year, if the person doesn't catch it, it goes on to their taxes. They can get a lien on the house. It has a whole domino effect. And we had said, let us not do that anymore before the last bill went out. So I had a report pulled. And I found out that it's not the case. They still went ahead and put through the $500 surcharges on people's bills in the water district. And so there's a potential that people could have liens put on their houses because there was a problem reading their meter. So instead of calling the person, leaving them a note, sending them a letter and saying, hey, they, we had a problem, let's work through this. They also send a letter. They don't just send out the $500 charge. The board determined that the $500 charges would no longer be put on the bills. We didn't and make that motion, did we? Yeah. We did. We did it by motion? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then they went ahead in the water um, committee when they did the billing, they went ahead and put the $500 charges on the bills. So and how we are we to we did get let people's them know. attention who don't have we an amount should, read? We should send them a, f a letter we should leave notices on their door we should call them you know reach out to them just like you would for any other reason well some of these places have absentee landlords so i mean i'm i don't how think that, i don't the think money? they're just sending them five hundred dollars i think the idea of the five hundred dollars was to get their attention so they would come in and say you know and allow people to see their meters I mean, there wouldn't a note in the bill be sufficient? They they well, just put five hundred dollars in the bill. Like all of a sudden, your bill is five hundred dollars more than you come anticipated. In and allow them to come in. So and instead look at of the being meter. proactive and reaching out to a customer saying we're having a problem with our meter equipment and we cannot read it, they're sending a bill to customers saying, hey. You owe us five hundred more dollars, and if you don't pay it, we're going to go ahead and put a tax lien on your house. 
But, but regardless, but the town think, board said that, that they did not want to have that continue forward, and they wanted to stop that process. Do you have proof? And then do you have proof that the five hundred dollar tax lien has been put? Been no, put but on that's any where. It, no, that's that's the process of it. Well, that's the process of the. That's going to happen. That is the process of the water bill. But if you don't pay your water bill, so they get a zero. It, it I mean, is that it's a zero written? read. So we are going to build them. Well, zero. some people are getting zero reads. What's now? the incentive for them to come in? Well, what we recommended is that the water committee go ahead and bill them the minimal charge for their type. So if they're a single family dwelling, it would be forty dollars for the quarter. If they're a multifamily dwelling, it would be forty five dollars for the quarter. So that was the recommendation. Pay the 45 and forget us, and right? then and then if there was any overage that would have to be settled when the meter could be read. But not just put in the five hundred dollars. But the point of the the point is that we said we weren't going to put in the five hundred dollars anymore and then they went ahead and put in the five hundred dollars. But not we, giving notice. So we only said the forty five dollars. The minimum required, the base level. For right? the type. I mean, there's several different types of. I think the of problem is they didn't get any. Um, they need to get cooperation from the property owner. Is that correct in order to get I in think there? the problem is that we told them not to put the $500 on the bills, and they did it. Mm -hmm. But we want to find the ultimate solution that will right. work. Right. And what we recommended was to call the owner, send a letter to the owner, post a notice on the property for three initial things, as well as take your base fees. Well, because you can't read the Marco. overage anyway. I'll sit with Marco and Karen, and we'll see what the process is and make sure it doesn't happen again. I've already sat with them once to look at the process. As have Vicki and uh, I. Well, I did it after you. And I- um, Everybody has. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> right, but the, the, there has to be an answer. But I that think also works, this $500 you know? screws up the computer system somehow. It does. It's, it's, it, it's, it's throws not, the whole, throws build, the whole billing, billing cycle off. off. Mm -hmm. so That's they why they said a different way. no $500, no overages, and no zeros. I'm sorry, no, it was an E, an O, or a 500. I don't think we can shut the water off. No, right? you can't shut the water no. off because your equipment is, isn't working? No. This is the town meter that doesn't work. This isn't a person right. not paying a but water bill. But we need bill. to make sure that um, we need to make sure that we can get access to the water meter and get enough attention. And if it's too easy for them to ignore that and just pay the base level, that's that seems to be the disconnect. Yeah, that seems mm -hmm. to be. So what the I answer is, I'm not positive. For anybody I do don't. Anything. Th I think they have done the base level in the past, right? No. And it has not, they haven't they ever just charged? just 500 bucks no, and boom, No, before they gone. started putting in the $500 charges, before that. Well, one of the problems They did that in the, order to get the, the attention, and it did work, according to the Sherry. They did get calls. They did have the cooperation of the property owners. They did, it is hard to get, if you're getting a base level amount, what's the incentive for them to get in touch with us and let them in to replace that <laughs> if you're gonna <coughs> let me reiterate that the the water billing was directed to remove these charges and it did not happen so I really want to make that point right and we were we gave them three alternatives to reach out to customers in the water district which they were doing already I mean, that's that they is weren't the sending out notices on the property, sending out letters really? to the people pertaining to it, or making phone calls they have to the sample owners. letters that they put in the billing. They do do that. Well, I agree they should follow the orders of the town, but beyond that, well, there has there to be a solution to, to figure out. But how the get second solution. part right. of the reason that we have them take it out, aside from the fact that it turns into a tax lien, whatever's not paid on your water bill at the end of the year, is the $500 and the O and E charges throw off the entire bill for the entire water district. So they do have to work that out with right. that. Which they is also to why we out. told them to take it out. And if they don't do it, they have to go through the whole thing manually, which costs us more money in personnel time. So I'm gonna ask again that the water committee be 
asked to take these charges off of the bill. They don't belong there and they create problems. So that's water. And then the last one, oh, the last one was log hours. So I guess we're up to PSA. So um, this one's really simple. There's an election coming up, so vote. Just, I don't care who you vote for, just go vote, please. Um, Vicki, could you say the same thing so we can have it from both parties? <laughs> vote? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, That's all I have them. Okay. And uh, also the, uh, the VFW is having a breakfast on November 2nd, uh, time, pancake breakfast from 7.30 to 11. So please support your local veterans organization. And um, I also ordered through Dutchess County Tourism these books that have all the local places where you can um, you know, enjoy crafts, a, a good restaurant, pick apples, whatever. So just help yourself to them. Uh, they're uh, right inside the door, and we have several. Oh, I'm sorry, one more thing. We did get our, our licensing, Windows licensing um, review um, for all of our systems, as well as our detailed hardware inventory, um, which is required for the audit. So that's done. It's very exciting. We are in the process of having an audit. Uh, they're here. Two, two auditors from the state of New York are here every day. Is it Monday they're here? Monday? Yeah, on Mondays. Uh, Tuesdays through Thursday they're here. Um, they've covered a lot of ground, looked at a lot of things, turned a lot of uh, stones over. I think we're doing okay so far. We'll see. But they're meeting with their supervisor. They told me on Tuesday to see if they may extend this uh, review to uh, certain areas. Uh, I think they're doing payroll right now. They're doing, um, they did the vouchers, they did payroll. Personnel, sort of things. Personnel, they're doing, there's a lot of personnel. Stanley's, they're gonna do Stanley. Um, IT. IT, they're, they're working gonna do, on. Yeah, they're gonna be here six weeks, six to eight weeks. Yeah. So, but they may expand it. I think that's good. I yeah. think they've been very helpful and yep. they're actually a wealth of information. Out, right. <coughs> also, Veterans Day is the 11th of November, and it'll be the same service at 11 a.m. as far as I know uh, at Fountain Square, and it'll be lovely. Come and support your veterans and those who paid the ultimate sacrifice. And I believe the Lantern is also having a Halloween event this weekend. That's right. Max and Mills and is Max going to be and the Wasaya project. Do you know about it? They do a good job. Well, Halloween at the mill. It's going to be hay rides and haunted house costume contest at the firehouse. Cider, dogs, and dancing. They promise. So that's Saturday, the twenty-sixth, in Wasaya at the mill and the firehouse. Did I say a time. We have to go to an executive session to discuss uh, personnel issues. So I'll make that motion. Second. 